understand why, because you two, you go way back. You're, you're, you're friends, you're old friends. I, right? I, yeah. But I learned how to do this in his studio. Like, I don't <laughs> even like, he's like my coach. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis' split rumors have been circulating online after his friendship with Diddy has been put under a magnifying glass following the rapper's arrest. Mila Kunis has suddenly gone quiet about her husband after shocking details about Diddy's criminal indictment came out. Ashton Kutcher has been using his fame to advocate for important causes, but now rumors suggest his wife has moved out because of what's about to happen with the Diddy case. Some surprising revelations hint at a deeper connection between Ashton and Diddy that no one expected. Did Ashton know more than he let on? Could Mila be risking it all, exposing secrets that could shake Hollywood to its core? Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis getting divorced. All right, guys, the rumor is that Ashton and Mila have separated in preparation for all of the dirt that's about to surface involving Ashton at the Diddy parties. A lot of people are buzzing about why Ashton Kutcher suddenly vanished from the public eye after Diddy's legal drama exploded. Rumors are swirling that Ashton and Mila Kunis might be calling it quits, and their ties to Diddy are raising eyebrows all over Hollywood. The tangled web between Ashton and Diddy is filled with secrets, and today, we're uncovering everything we know about Ashton's involvement in Diddy's mysterious world. But here's the kicker. The FBI is now involved, hinting that this case might go even deeper than we imagined. Could Mila hold the key to blowing this whole thing wide open? And is Ashton's connection to Diddy darker than we ever thought? Everything Ashton touches is now under intense scrutiny, and what we're about to reveal may shock even his most loyal fans. For years, Ashton has been the lovable goofball from That 70s Show, the tech genius turned entrepreneur. But recent events suggest he's been hiding much more behind the scenes. Ashton Kutcher, he started Thorn and Ant organization back in 2009 had to step down in 2023 because he started so much controversy in supporting Danny Masterson a convicted rapist but there's a lot more to this that is now swinging around to the Diddy side first off many people didn't realize Ashton Kutcher and Diddy have a history that goes way back Diddy who's had a ton of different names over the years starting as P Diddy then Puffy and now just love began his rise in the 90s in New York City in 1993, he launched Bad Boy Records, which later became Bad Boy Entertainment, one of the biggest names in the music industry. But he didn't just sign any artists. He brought in the notorious B.I.G., also known as Christopher Wallace, whose name alone was making Bad Boy Entertainment millions every year. In fact, Puffy has been making money off Biggie's legacy longer than Biggie was alive, as Biggie tragically died at 24. But Diddy wasn't just famous for his music. He was everywhere. Fashion, TV shows, you name it. One of Diddy's favorite pastimes was rubbing shoulders with Hollywood elites, and one of those elites was Ashton Kutcher. Yep, Diddy and Ashton were pretty close. Ashton once said their friendship was bizarre, but they quickly hit it off, hanging out, watching football, and even going on runs together. So how did they meet? It all started with Punked, Ashton's prank show on MTV, but their bond didn't stop there. Diddy was busy producing multiple seasons of Making the Band, and the two were regularly spotted together at events and parties especially Diddy's famous 2010 Labor Day White Party. Here's a fun fact. When Time Magazine named Ashton one of the 100 most influential people that year, Diddy couldn't stop praising him. He called Ashton a sounding board and said, like me, he's a mogul, a new media mogul, but we're like yin and yang. I'm in your face and he's all cool and suave. Fast forward to 2019. Ashton appeared on Hot Ones with Sean Evans, eating spicy wings. And of course, Diddy's legendary parties came up. Ashton hinted that he had tons of stories, but couldn't spill all the tea. Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. If oh, you really? Have one, yeah. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. <laughs> so, um, I can't tell that one either. Now, with Diddy facing serious charges like racketeering and S-teaking, people are starting to wonder if Ashton knew more than he's letting on. And Ashton hasn't exactly been free of controversy himself. Last year, he and Mila Kunis faced major backlash for supporting their That 70s Show co-star, Danny Masterson, who had legal issues over essay allegations. For those who may not know, Danny Masterson has just been sentenced to 30 years to life in prison and must register as an offender after being convicted on two counts of essay. In the midst of this, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis faced backlash for their public support of Masterson. Actress Christina Ricci didn't hold back, calling them out and triggering even more controversy. In a powerful social media post, Ricci wrote, Unfortunately, I've known lots of great guys who were kind to me, but later turned out to be toxic behind closed doors. 
Believe victims. It's not easy to come forward, and it's even harder to get a conviction. In another slide, Ricci continued, Sometimes people we love and admire do terrible things. They might not have done those things to us, but that doesn't mean they didn't happen. To discredit victims is a crime. People we know as good guys can still be p-daters and harmful. It's tough to accept, but we have to. If we claim to support victims, women, children, men, boys, we must take this stand. Although Ricci didn't mention names, her post seemed to be aimed directly at Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, which prompted the couple to release a clarification video. For context, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis wrote letters to the court supporting Danny Masterson, asking for a more lenient sentence. In their letters, they painted Danny as a positive role model who had a major impact on their lives. Ashton even gave him credit for helping him stay away from illegal substances during their friendship while Mila described him as a big brother figure who also avoided substances, inspiring her to do the same. But when the backlash hit, Ashton and Mila didn't shy away. They quickly dropped a joint video apology where they explained how Danny's family had asked them to write these character references a few months back. The letters were meant for the judge to provide insight into the Danny they had known for over 25 years. They made it clear that their intention wasn't to discredit the victims or cause any harm. Ashton said they'd never want that and apologized if their actions hurt anyone. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. But with Diddy's recent arrest, all that backlash seems to connect some dots. But here's the twist. This isn't Ashton Kutcher's first brush with dark moments from his past. One particularly chilling incident is the tragic murder of his girlfriend, Ashley Ellerin. TikTok has been buzzing about this story, and it's pretty unsettling. Do you know the story from 2001 when a young Ashton Kutcher got stood up on a date, and then the next morning, that girl had been murdered? And you remember how Kanye said that they couldn't control him because he ain't never killed no one. And listen, I'm not accusing Ashton Kutcher of murder or anything else. I'm just saying there might be a lot of skeletons in his closet. Now, you might be surprised to learn that Ashton Kutcher was a witness in the murder trial back in 2001. He had plans to pick up a girl named Ashley Ellerin for a date, but ended up hours late. When he knocked on her door and got no response, he looked through the window and saw what he thought were wine stains on the carpet. He figured she had blown him off. However, he later found out those stains were actually blood, and Ashley was dead inside her apartment. Her roommate discovered her the next morning. Ashley was a fashion student and had met Ashton at a Christmas party. They started dating after Ashton became single. On the evening of their planned dinner, Ashton called her in the afternoon to confirm their plans. Later, he called again at 7.30 p.m. to say he was running late. Ashley called him back at 8.24 p.m., letting him know she was getting ready after showering, so everything seemed fine. Ashton claims he was at a friend's house during the Grammy Awards and lost track of time. When he finally decided to head to Ashley's place between 10.30 and 10.45 p.m., he knocked on her door but got no answer. He thought it was strange because the lights were on, and it looked a bit messy since she had just moved in. When he looked through the window and saw red wine on the carpet, he assumed she had hosted a wild housewarming party. He thought he was just late and that Ashley might be upset with him. Unfortunately, the reality was much darker. Her horrified roommates later discovered her lifeless, mutilated body inside. Fast forward to 2019. Ashton had to testify in court about his experience for the trial of a man known as the Hollywood Ripper, who was responsible for Ashley's death and several other murders. Just to clarify, Ashton wasn't convicted of anything related to this case. Still, it's a bit suspicious that he had an alibi at a friend's house during the Grammy Awards. But let's be real. There was a real killer out there a guy named Michael, who was arrested in 2008 and suspected of multiple murders. Ashley had been brutally stabbed 47 times, with wounds as deep as six inches across her chest, stomach, neck, and back. When Ashton heard the news, he immediately went to the police and explained that he had been outside her home the night before. He told them, my fingerprints are on this door, and I was freaking out. Ashton insisted he had no idea who this Michael guy was and that he wasn't part of Ashley's life at all. Detectives noted that Ashley's front door was locked, with no signs of forced entry when they found her body. Michael was arrested in 2008 and has pleaded not guilty to the charges. At the time of her death, Ashley was living with some friends, and the morning after, a girl named Jennifer DeSisto came home to find Ashley covered in blood. She immediately called the police, who discovered that Ashley had been stabbed 47 times and had just taken a shower. Her body was found right outside the bathroom. What's eerie? 
is that the lead detective mentioned there was little evidence to go on because, despite the brutal stabbing, there was no blood splatter. Jennifer believed that whoever killed Ashley had to have known her since their home was double-gated. After finding out Ashton was supposed to go on a date with Ashley the night before, detectives questioned him. Ashton explained that when he first met Ashley, he was in another relationship and introduced her to one of his buddies, just two weeks before her murder. He had been at her house for a party, and they had made plans to go out for dinner and drinks. But wait, the story doesn't end there. Danny Masterson's accuser also brought up a supposed phone call with Ashton on the night of Ashley's murder. Chrissy Carnell Bixler, who dated Danny Masterson back in the late 90s and early 2000s, took to Instagram to share a striking message. Dear Ashton, I know the secret your role model keeps for you. Ones that will end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speaker that night when you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. In addition to this, Chrissy has been posting a series of old clips showing Ashton Kutcher and his wife Mila Kunis interacting, along with one featuring Mila and Danny Masterson that feels pretty unsettling. One notable clip comes from when Hilary Duff appeared on Kutcher's show, Punked. The awkward part? Ashton introduced the then 15-year-old star by saying, She's one of the girls. We're all waiting to turn 18. Another clip shows Ashton and Mila reminiscing about how they first met and kissed on set. These videos have sparked an online frenzy with fans calling for Ashton to be canceled. Many are demanding more of these clips, arguing that he and Danny were clearly creeping on underage girls. You know what's funny is when she was she was 14 when we started the show, I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be making out in this scene. And I'm like thinking like, wait, I this is like slightly illegal, say, that's right? That's probably your first kiss ever, right? It was my first kiss. Why is someone bet you made with Danny about our first kiss? No, it wasn't the first <laughs> kiss. <laughs> now, there are new claims suggesting that Ashton Kutcher's account of the night Ashley Ellerin was murdered isn't what he always presented in court. Instead of just looking through the window and leaving, it seems he actually walked into the apartment and saw her body before fleeing in fear of the consequences. Neighbors reported hearing screams coming from Ashley's apartment around 8.30 p.m., which aligns with when Michael's team suggests the murder occurred. After allegedly witnessing the gruesome scene, Ashton supposedly went to his car and called his management and others to figure out how to navigate the PR crisis. He ultimately decided to proceed with his plans for the party, leaving behind the horrific event that he had just witnessed. It's hard to wrap your head around how Ashton could go on with his night after encountering something so terrifying. If he truly saw a bloodstain that he mistook for wine, how could he have overlooked the rest of the chaotic scene? Blood doesn't resemble red wine in any way. But going back to the situation with Diddy and Ashton Kutcher, it's quite striking that despite all the backlash Ashton is facing, his wife Mila Kunis has been surprisingly silent. Sources close to the couple are suggesting that Mila is growing increasingly uncomfortable with Ashton's connections to Diddy, especially given the ongoing FBI investigation into Diddy's associates. This has led to a lot of speculation that Mila might actually be cooperating with authorities behind the scenes. If that's the case, it would certainly explain her decision to distance herself from Ashton lately. After all, she's been by his side for years and likely has insight into his private world that could hold some explosive information, putting him in serious legal jeopardy. Whispers are circulating that Mila has been in touch with federal investigators, possibly providing crucial details that could expose Ashton's involvement with Diddy's criminal circle. If this speculation is true, Ashton's world could be on the brink of collapse, and it would be a shocking turn of events. Meanwhile, Diddy has been making headlines for weeks following his arrest. Reports indicate that he's been refusing to eat while in jail, fearing that someone might be trying to poison him. The rumors are rampant that Diddy Combs believes he could be targeted in a way that would make it seem like he took his own life or died from an unfortunate accident. Sources close to the situation are saying that Diddy's paranoia is through the roof, especially since his testimony could potentially expose some serious dirt on some of the biggest players in the industry. Former inmate Larry Levine has been fueling the rumor mill by claiming that Diddy might have stopped eating altogether due to his fears that someone could poison his food. Levine hints that Diddy is sitting on some major secrets involving people with deep pockets and high stakes, and there's a real concern that they might want to silence him before he gets a chance to take the stand. The list of names is staggering. Justin Bieber, Kevin Hart, Mark Wahlberg, Snoop Dogg, DJ Khaled, and more. While some might brush off Diddy's fears as mere paranoia, others believe this is just the tip of a much larger iceberg. What's really raising eyebrows is the timing of everything. Diddy's testimony is scheduled to happen soon, and the buzz around town is that what he has to say could shake the very foundations of the entertainment industry. 
His fans are worried that he won't survive long enough to tell his side of the story, especially given the recent suspicious deaths of other high-profile figures who were set to testify against him. To add to the drama, the judge recently denied Diddy's bail request. This came after he attempted to offer a staggering $50 million along with his and his mother's multi-million dollar mansions in Miami as collateral. He even went so far as to offer up his passport and the passports of his children, including his one-year-old, who was barely old enough to walk. But despite all these efforts, the judge wasn't having it. They firmly said, nope, you're staying put, essentially sending a message that Diddy isn't going anywhere anytime soon. A $50 million bond is no joke, and the fact that the judge didn't even blink before saying no really shows how serious this case is. To put this in perspective, the average bail for a serious crime in California is usually around $2 million. For that, you typically only have to come up with 10%, which is $200,000. You can pay that by using your house or other assets as collateral. But Diddy offered way more than that, even putting up an $18 million mansion. Yet the judge still told him he's not going anywhere. That's wild. So what exactly did Diddy do that landed him in this hot water? According to the indictment released right after his arrest, the charges against him date all the way back to 2008. For over a decade, Diddy managed to avoid getting caught, and that's because he wasn't working alone. He had some very powerful people backing him up. Not only that, he had a whole network of hotels across the country on his payroll, along with a group of people whose job was to keep his victims quiet. In some cases, if they weren't silent, they faced intimidation, including threats with firearms. Diddy didn't do this all by himself. He's been charged with RICO conspiracy, which means he was running a full-blown criminal enterprise. This wasn't just about throwing wild parties. It was much darker than that. The enterprise was involved in forced labor, transporting people across state lines for illegal activities, arson, bribery, and even obstructing justice. Reports indicate that Diddy used force, threats, and manipulation to get women to participate in these disturbing parties, which were not only unsettling, but also recorded on video. Some of these parties lasted for days, and the victims needed IV fluids to recover from the physical and emotional trauma they suffered. If that wasn't enough, most of Diddy's victims were flown into the U.S. and forced into these depraved acts without any consent. Diddy and his crew used all sorts of twisted tactics to control them. One of the shocking details that emerged from the investigation was that they used tons of lubricants and baby oil on these victims, both women and men. Allegedly, they stocked hotel rooms with cases and cases of personal lubricant and baby oil, with over 1,000 bottles found during the raid. This raid was a huge turning point in the case, revealing the shocking extent of Diddy's alleged crimes. And with all that being said, the fact that Ashton Kutcher knows everything but has chosen to stay silent is quite telling, right? It makes sense that he would side with Danny Masterson, even after Masterson was convicted of serious crimes. So what do you think? Do you believe Mila Kunis will eventually expose Ashton? Or do you think she'll stick by his side like she has for the past few years? Comment down below with your thoughts. While we wait for more updates on this situation, be sure to check out our other videos that also dive deep into the Diddy case.